Hello my friends, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics and today it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Creators because this is a new Hybrid Creators video. It has been about five or six months but I want to start doing this now because a lot of people are looking into content creation or posting on social media as kind of a side hustle because of the recent unfortunate economic downturn. So these are some thoughts I want to share. Now, I actually set up this camera, the camera's right here. I was setting it up, I was getting ready to do a video on monetization because that's a very common topic and the title of the video was going to be something like do likes and followers and views convert into dollars and the answer is yes but not directly obviously but as i was setting it up i was like wait a second there's actually a barrier before this that i am not that aware of until i hear it from other people and it makes a lot of sense which is how do you have the courage and the confidence to post on social media and put yourself out there consistently. It's one thing to do a reel or a YouTube short and post it there, you know, and just monitor it, check it every day, and let months go by. But when you're posting consistently, it can be daunting for some people to consistently be vulnerable because <laughs> if you're posting daily content, you're less likely to be able to script every single word and really micromanage every single thing you do. As you start doing it every day, or at least weekdays, there's gonna be some days where you're like, man, I'm tired, what else do I wanna talk about? And those days might be the days where you reveal your vulnerable self, and that can be very daunting, it can be scary for some people, and that's really what keeps some knowledge from entering the world. It's crazy to realize, right? Some people have amazing stories, amazing messages, amazing lessons to hear. Like think about the content creator or person, whether it's David Goggins or whomever, who impacted you the most, Imagine if they just didn't exist digitally. They still did everything they did, but you never heard their story because they were too scared to tell it through social media. And I definitely want to do this casting no judgment on the people who feel this way. Because I don't feel this way, but I may not have been raised the same way these people have. I may not have been through some of the traumatizing experiences, maybe bullying or cyberbullying that these people have. So if you feel this way, it's okay. There are many different ways we can approach this and try to help you, but this video is just one of the ways. So at first I wanna start off with some good news because if you are watching this and you're like, I have a message that I wanna share on social media. It doesn't have to be video, it could be audio, it could be written word. I have a message I wanna share, but I'm kinda of scared of some mean trolls that are gonna show up in my comments section. And I, you know, maybe you're worried that you'll wanna spend all your time arguing with them or something. The key thing that someone reminded me of the other day is that it disappears. The trolls and hate comments they disappear. You're probably aware of them because you read them through <laughs> other posts. Like you see another video from a content creator you like or another video you see pop up in your feed and you scroll through the comments you're like, wow, they're being very judgmental of her appearance or like, wow, they're really bashing this guy. Those comments usually fade away. That video you watched might be the top comments of an older video or that person might be newly trending. But something you don't really notice until you're on the content creator side of it is you don't notice that the re responses are always mean and judgmental, usually in the beginning. I'm not talking about criticism. Like for example, if I put out a video on exercise form and someone is like, no, I think this is wrong and here's some studies that show you why it's wrong. I'm not talking about criticism like that. I'm talking about someone who's like, well, you're ugly. I think you're stupid and your point is wrong. Things like that. And I don't mean, I don't mean to make them sound stupid. They're, they're, I mean, they're hurting too. Those comments eventually go away. I think the first viral video I had on YouTube from Hybrid Calisthenics was a YouTube short, which didn't get that many views at first because shorts were still being tested at the time. And it was my elbow lever video. So it's the one where I'm balancing on this rail here, you can't see, but I'm balancing right here and I show you how to do an elbow lever. And the top comment for a while was, looks like his gender is balanced too. And the second top comment, it had like 10,000 likes. No, not the video, the comment. And the second one was like, I can't tell if this was a man or a woman. You know, and, and someone was like, your long hair is stupid. I thought you were a girl, cut your hair. And these had like 20,000 likes on the comment and like, like multiple like laugh emojis and stuff. Now that never bothered me because at the time I was already used to this. First of all, comments like that about my appearance just don't hit me. There are other things that I might be vulnerable about, which I'll touch upon later. But that never really bothered me. I thought it was funny. But I went back a few times because I've made videos about this topic before trying to find those comments and I can't find them anymore. I'm pretty sure they got deleted because what happens when you're newly introduced 
to a crowd of people is there's a lot of people that are trying to do a similar thing to you in the sense that they want their comment to be seen by a lot of people and they think through popular culture and being savage and like wow this person has no chill they think leaving a hurtful but the funny comment that gets them a lot of likes they get a high off that so the same way some people get high get a high off a video that's trending and getting a lot of views some people don't want to make that video they just want to leave a comment that is the top comment that everyone laughs at and it's like haha you're right that person is ugly if i don't know if that makes you feel better but that is often what they want they just want the short-term fame but that disappears they want the short-term fame but they also they're also very sensitive to criticism too oftentimes as you start posting regular content you'll start accru accruing an actual community not just a temporary audience that got your video for whatever reason the algorithm decided it's usually because there other people are watching their videos but as you start to accumulate this community you will have people respond be like you know if you're if you have a good community they often approach it respectfully like hey there's no reason to judge someone's appearance they, they either can't help it or I think they look fine stuff like that and as they start getting some negative pushback these comments often disappear nowadays there are some videos where like my hair is longer now in some videos and I never see those comments anymore. I don't bear any ill will towards them. I never deleted them or anything, but I don't see them anymore because it's less fun for these people to try to poke fun at me because there's an actual community backing it up. So I started with that. There is a deeper thought on this. Once again, many different ways to approach this topic. I started off with that because I want to reassure you that even if you get some hateful comments, that's often a temporary thing. And in fact, I've learned to recognize that as a good thing. You don't have to be like me, but I've learned to recognize that as a good thing. Because when I start getting those comments on a new platform, so I mean, at, at first it was TikTok, and then I branched out on different platforms. There was YouTube, and we've trended on Instagram and Facebook. The top comments are always like that. I've learned to recognize them. I've learned to recognize them, that when I'm introduced to a new batch of people, let's say you show my video to a million people that don't really know me, the top comments are often like that at first, and then they go bloop, 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 bloop. They go down, and other things like, oh, this was helpful. And the reason, and the people who actually watched the video and benefited from it will start commenting, and it starts washing it away. So when I see those, those uh, criticisms, I like it, because I'm like, oh, this is a sign that this platform is responding to my content. Time to double down on it. I'll start posting all my other stuff there, and hopefully helping some people. So it does go away. The trolls are often temporary with some exceptions, of course. Some people naturally have more controversial content, like for example, political content. So if you go on pretty much any well-known politician <laughs> recent post, you will see some arguments, usually. The bulk are going to be the fans, but then there's gonna be staunch opposers who are like, no, this is wrong, I think this is stupid. You're hurting people. I'm not making fun of it. Some of them actually are hurting people, but that's just the, the constant state of things. and. That's something I've learned to recognize. The reason I didn't really touch upon that is because if you are someone who is post posting controversial stuff, if you think that, what's a controversial take? If for some reason you think farming is the most violent profession, like imagine if that was your channel name, farming is the most violent profession, and you were serious about it. If you're someone like that, I'm guessing that you, one, expect some pushback and criticism because this probably isn't the first time you've talked about it and you recognize that people want to argue with you and two, you're already used to it. So that's why I'm not touching upon the, the more controversial stuff that naturally invites controversy, which isn't necessarily bad. There's a lot of really good points that need to happen. A lot of so good social change that happened started off as controversial until people normalized it. So it's not bad, but I'm guessing that if you're in that, then you may not be watching this video as much or as intently, just because you're already used to dealing with that feedback. There might be some other things you can use, but by and large, if you're just doing fitness content, makeup content, etc., the bad comments eventually peter out. Now, the second point, I'm going to kind of flip the coin a little bit because this is a different way to look at it. I did an, not an interview, but I had a meeting with someone <clears throat> who was testing an, some app technology which could go into your comments and your messages and kind of analyze them and sort them by most important questions. And it was basically just a different way for creators to get insights on what their audience wanted. And one of the things that he mentioned to me, he said that he had another creator say, oh, if you could just make the negative comments in my comment section just go away, that would be great. 
If you could like auto delete them, that'd be awesome. I don't even want to see them. And he asked me if I wanted that. And I was like, no, I want to see the negative comments. And <laughs> there's many different ways to approach that. The first thing is that I already know what I want to say to most of the comments because I'm already used to what a lot of the comments will say, you know, because I recognize the truth of things. If someone says I'm not muscular enough to be talking about fitness, I acknowledge that. There's a lot of people more muscular than I am. I'm just like, I'm happy that you have people who are muscular enough for you to listen to. I really hope they can help you out. Same with not being strong enough, same with not being good looking enough, etc. I'm not everyone's flavor and that's okay. So I already have a way to respond to these people and sometimes it turns them around. They're like, oh, you know, Hampton seems okay. Maybe I'll actually watch his stuff. And it also shows other people how I deal with negative feedback, which I, I like. But there are other things, and this is kind of what I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that I might have more issues with. There are certain insecurities that I think pretty much all of us have that are different that we need to work through. So when I get a comment, that actually bothers me. You know, first of all, I, I want to respond respectfully. I might just wait, but I always ask myself, either now or later, why did that in particular bother me? And for me, it makes a lot of sense because I've dealt with a lot of negative feedback before. It didn't bother me. It, it like it pinged, I was immune to it. I was immune to it. Why does this comment saying that, oh, your video on push-ups is hurting people. Your video on posture is misleading people, leading to injury. Why does that bother me? So for using that as an example, I'm like, hmm. Because I, I mean, I try to verify everything I post. I don't think it's gonna be hurting anyone, otherwise I wouldn't post it. So why does that bother me? Using that as an example, like maybe I have some insecurity over this hurting someone. Because I can't teach people in person, I don't know who they are. The body might be different or they might have some kind of medical condition where they shouldn't do that. So from there I learned what, well, that's also just the downside of mass media like this. So like I say mass media, but really it's like one to many. If I make a video and thousands of people see it, I obviously don't know exactly who I'm talking to the same way I would if you were standing right here. So I can't always tailor my input and my advice to them. So I have to add a disclaimer. I have to say, hey, if you don't think this works for you, please consult a physician or just don't do it. Or you know, consult a medical professional about this before you actually do it, right? So I, I have to, part of it was me recognizing that hmm, I might have this insecurity because I have a fear of accidentally hurting someone. That's not something I want to do. It's definitely not something that I want to be seen as, as seen as someone who's hurting others because I spend a lot of time on my content. I wouldn't spend all that time just to hurt someone. So I was like, maybe I have this fear and that fear is leading into an insecurity. And that's why that particular comment bothered me. So I use internet negative feedback as a lens into myself. Like when I see something that actually bothers me, I'll kind of rephrase what I said earlier. I don't have to respond first because sometimes I want to internalize it. I want to say, hmm, why did that in particular bother me? So I use it as insight into myself and I can almost always find a fear or an insecurity. And how I treat that fear and insecurity, the salve, I just realized I don't know how to pronounce that word. The remedy I use for that injury is usually honesty. I want to face myself. And a lot of the times I'm like, why does this bother me so much? I'm like, maybe I'm not being honest with myself. Like for example, if comments about me being skinny or not muscular enough did bother me, maybe I need some honesty and be like, well, maybe that's a valid point. Maybe I could be more muscular, but that's okay, right? We're all working on ourselves. So I use it as a lens into myself. Also, sometimes this leads into the next point, which is probably my final point here. I try to feel compassion for people who hate on me. People who are actively taking time out of their day to try to make mine worse. I recognize that they may not be in the best spot. I love a lot of the comments, emails, and messages I get. I don't always have a chance to respond. I love the people doing it. I see their hard work. I wish I could give them each a five paragraph essay, a personalized video saying, Thank you so much for watching this. I'm really glad it helped you. How else can I help you? I wish I could do that and I used to, but now I can't do it as much. So I don't even have time to respond to the people that, that really move me. Sometimes my family and friends, I'm too busy in quotes to be able to help them or go see them at a concert or go out to dinner with them because I'm working. Obviously I wouldn't be spending that time trying to hurt someone else in a comment section. So because that person is taking like, especially if it's like a really long 
essay about why I suck, I'm like, this person must be hurting. So I try to feel bad for them. You know, that, that's how I get a lot of my responses. It's like, well, your comment is noted. I hope you feel better. I'm sorry my nose bothered you. I always try to face the people who either seek to wrong me or bear ill will towards me. It's obviously not the entire story, but I try to keep some compassion for them. It's not always an excuse, and you don't have to keep these people in your life. If someone is hurting you, you can remove them from your life. In this case, you can just delete the comment, <laughs> or you can ignore it, but I also try to keep some compassion for them. It doesn't excuse their behavior, but for me, I feel better when I find a reason for them. When I combine honesty towards myself and compassion, compassion towards others, that's really when I feel the best and when I put myself in a mental state to where I can create and help the world. And that's what I'll end with because you guys have already known this and that's why I want to say this for last because I want to keep the most cliche, the most mainstream, the most common advice towards this that you've already heard towards the end. But it doesn't mean it doesn't have value because the, one of the reasons this in particular is the most common is because it's very true. It's very true. Many of you do have a valuable message, a valuable lesson, a valuable personality. You know, and you don't have to teach someone something. You might just be funny. <laughs> you might just be funny and you, you can entertain people and that can carry some people through some dark times. If you don't think you have anything to teach, but you just like to share your funny insights on the world, that's one way where you can build a platform, build an audience, and you can reach a lot of people and you can help them. Either through the digital era or not, because eventually we may not be in a digital era. I'll put it this way, we may not be making videos in the same way we are now. That's almost guaranteed to change at least somewhat over the next 5, 10, 20 years. Wherever it may be, your ability to communicate and your willingness to communicate is pretty much always going to matter. And the foundation of that, that I had to remind myself and we can all remind ourselves of, is having the emotional capacity and the emotional strength to be able to do that. So those are my thoughts on it. I really hope this can help you. As usual, please let me know in the comments what helped you the most and how else I can help you. And I'll try to make content around that. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Have a wonderful, beautiful day, my friend. I'm just gonna walk towards the camera now because I don't, I don't have my remote.